This video is a bit long with lots of experiments, so to give you a quick answer, you should give floorboards out of the packaging at least a week, probably four weeks to acclimatize your house before you install it. At our old house, we had hardwood flooring installed and the installers gave it four days to acclimatize to our house, but that was inside the packaging and it turns out that wasn't enough. And so the flooring expanded a little bit after it was installed and that caused some cupping. And that's because floorboards like this are always a little bit wider on the top than they are on the bottoms. So that if you've got uh, the floor that's just a little bit uneven, say it's curved like this a little bit, if they're wider on the top, the gaps will still close. And even if the floor is straight, it's much easier to get those gaps on the top to close properly. The problem with that is if the floorboards expand a little bit and push against each other, then they're primarily pushing against the top of each other like this. And if the boards are squeezed just on the top, they go from flat like this to a little bit bowed. And that's because they're compressed along this side and that causes bending like this. So I was curious, how long would floorboards take to really acclimatize? So I decided to build a jig to measure that. And rather than just measuring the changes in width with a dial indicator, I figured it'd be interesting to also try to place a humidity sensor in the slot in the piece of wood. So the sensor fits nicely in this hole and I still have about five millimeters of wood on either side and I need to seal that in an airtight manner and I was gonna use some hot glue to seal that in but that would make a real mess of this wire when I take it back out so instead I'm gonna use some petroleum jelly This camera module is going to take a picture of this thing every hour or so. And then I left it in the basement for two days to make sure it was at steady state. And then I put it out in the shed where conditions varied a lot more. So I had to punch in all the numbers from my dial indicators. And I have those on my spreadsheet here. And these columns are the data that was acquired by my temperature and humidity sensors. And here I've got the graph of the uh, size, the line in black, the line in blue is relative humidity, and the red line is temperature. And the first thing I noticed is the size seemed to vary backwards compared to relative humidity. And I realized that was actually a temperature effect. As the temperature goes up, the size goes up and the relative humidity goes down. And changes in the wood size would actually be much slower but you can see towards later in this graph, the size does go up without the temperature going up correspondingly. This is after several days, the grid lines here happen to be days. So now viewing this on a longer time scale, you can see here, this is about as far as the first graph went and the humidity was relatively high. Uh, you can see this is 80 here. And so we're looking at 80% relative humidity for quite a bit of time and the size did go up, bobbling up and down as the temperature went up and then all the way up to here, at which point I thought maybe the uh, pieces of wood weren't uh, tight against each other anymore. So I took them out, banged them back together and that did reduce the size by a bit over a tenth of a millimeter. The units here for the size are hundredths of a millimeter. So I was curious how the size varied without uh, temperature effects. So I graphed the size versus the temperature of the wood. I was measuring the temperature inside the uh, wood with the sensor in there. And you can see it has a certain slope to it. So from that, I was able to temperature compensate the size. So this is now the line in black and you can see the uh, up and down wobbles with temperature that I've got here are mostly gone. So that is more of a true reflection of the size as it changes. And you can see it crept up here quite a lot as the humidity was high. Up until about here, um, this is where I banged it back together. And then the humidity outside dropped a bit and I thought, well, let's see how it will settle in the basement. So I took it inside. Uh, the relative humidity here varies much less because it just cycles up and down as the dehumidifier turns on and off. 
and the temperature is also very steady it being a basement and you can see it settles over time but we've got actually about three weeks here where it's settling and we can't really say that it's done settling so coming from high humidity to a lower humidity in the basement the settling time is quite long then I had the idea of also plotting the internal relative humidity and that's the turquoise line here which uh, doesn't actually vary nearly as much as the relative humidity outside that's the blue line here then I plotted it versus temperature that's relative humidity inside the wood versus temperature because the humidity vary a lot with going up as temperature went up which is strange because usually relative humidity goes down as temperature goes up so compensating for the temperature effect on the relative humidity now the turquoise line does kind of follow the black line in terms of size so that internal relative humidity is a reasonable indicator of what the humidity is of the wood and the reason the relative humidity goes up as temperature goes up which is backwards because relative humidity usually goes down as temperature goes up because the air can hold so much more humidity with higher temperatures but the wood's ability to hold humidity at higher temperature is actually much less so as the temperature goes up the wood releases humidity into the hole inside the wood where I'm measuring and that's why relative humidity goes up with temperature inside the wood and then I was curious what would happen if I lowered the temperature by a lot in the so freezer. So here's my plots in the freezer and the red line is temperature. I took it down to minus 20 degrees Celsius and you can see the size as expected dropped quite a bit. And then I thought about heating it up so I put a 60 watt bulb inside the freezer and with the freezer off that got the temperature around uh, 50 degrees Celsius so that's pretty hot. And of course the size went up with the temperature, but then it starts to drop even though the temperature is not dropping very much. So the wood is indeed drying out. And then I went to freezer cycle again and this time the size drops down quite a bit further than it had been previously. So yes, the wood had dried out. And then I thought, what will it settle at? So first I heated up the freezer again with the bulb so I wouldn't get condensation on the wood once I took it out. And then I put it in the basement. And you can see it's starting to settle in a matter of just a few days. It seems to be pretty, pretty settled there after just four days, grid lines or days. But it settles at a different position than it had been where it was outside. So that was a mystery. So I thought, let's do this some more. Let's heat it up again. So I put it back in the freezer. And with a light bulb, I held the temperature at 50 degrees there for two and a half days straight. I had it actually heating in there for over three days, but not always at that high temperature. And the size really comes down rather steeply compared to anything else I'd seen before. So high heat really helps to dry out the wood. And then after three days, I took it out again. And here you can see the size is coming back up, but it uh, seems to be flattening out here. Not like it was gonna settle anywhere like this here. So again, a bit of a mystery. And if you uh, model this as a bit of an exponential decay curve, it would settle somewhere around the uh, minus 50 line, maybe just above that. So very far from what it was settling towards here. And then looking at the internal relative humidity, which once again, I compensated for temperature and scaled that up and it tracks fairly well. But the final slope here is again, a bit different. Everything is a mystery. When I took the boards out of the freezer where I had been heating them to 50 degrees Celsius for a few days, uh, looking at the boards, you can see there's gaps between them towards the ends, but not in the middle, which tells me the ends had shrunken by quite a bit more than the middle. So presumably I had about another millimeter to go if these boards had dried as much as they dried on the ends in the middle as well. So not only were they not as dry as they could be, they're also mostly drying from the ends, even though they're much longer than they are thick. So I was hoping to produce a really straightforward answer and even a model for how the wood dries, but it turns out it's really complicated. Wood drying is complicated and the wood is dead. Imagine how much more complicated it would be trying to characterize a living thing. Anyways, I've had enough of these experiments. Um, useful data, but no clear model.